So grouping is needed when we have four or more terms. So let's look at number one. We have 8r cubed minus 64r squared plus r minus 8. So we want to group the first two and the last two terms and then take out a GCF from each of those parentheses. So out of the first two terms, I could take out 8r squared, and then I would have r minus 8 left over. And out of the second two terms, the second group, I could take out a positive 1 because that's all they have in common. And then r minus 8 would be left over. So then you want to put together the two greatest common factors you took out becomes your first factor. And then the one that they have in common, that leftover factor, you just need to bring one of those down. And then those are your two factors. So I'm just going to write that this one time. But these we call our two factors of our original polynomial. All right, let's look at number two. So in this one, we have four terms again. Let's group the first two and the last two. Take out the greatest common factor from each of those groups. So out of 12p cubed minus 21p squared, I can take out 3p squared. Then I would have p minus 7 left over. Out of the second group, take out the sign that's right there at the beginning, and then they have 7 in common because 28 and 49 divide evenly by 7. Then I have 4p minus 7 left over. And now these factors are supposed to match. Notice I have p minus 7 and 4p minus 7, so something has to be wrong somewhere. So let me double check that I did the math right. So 3p squared times p, oh, that would not give me 12p cubed. So what happened there is I missed a 4. So let's go back and put in a 4. Because like I say, those factors should always be matching. So now let's write them together. So we have 3p squared plus 7 would be our first factor. And our second factor are the ones I've already underlined in green. But only bring one of those down. You only need one. All right, let's look at another example. So number three, we're going to group the first two and group the last two. We take out a greatest common factor from the first two terms. So that would be 2x squared. They have 6x plus 1 left over. It's important to put the 1 because that's what would be needed so that if you multiplied it back together again, you would get that binomial right above there. And then, let me erase that for now. Out of the second two terms, take out whatever that sign is at the beginning, so negative in this case, and then 30x minus 5, their greatest common factor would be 5. So if I take out a negative 5, I need to have a 6x plus 1 left over. Notice, like I mentioned on the last example, these two have to match. So it's important to take out this negative to make them matching. And now let's put things together. So we have 2x squared minus 5 is our first factor. And then, oh, let me keep my color scheme going. 6x plus 1 is the one that's in common, so we just need one of those. All right, we have one more good example to look at. So number four, we have 6v cubed minus 16v squared minus 21v plus 56. So let's group the first two and the last two. Out of 6v cubed minus 16v squared, we could take out 2v squared, and we would have 3v minus 8 left over. Remember to take out the sign at the beginning of that second group and then take out between 21v and 56. The largest number they have in common is 7. So if you take out negative 7, you would need to have a 3v minus 8 left over. Notice when you multiply that back together again, it does equal what was in that parentheses to start with negative 21v plus 56. 
So it might seem weird that you change the sign, but it is what you need to do to make a match. All right, so then put the two greatest common factors as your first factor, and then the one they had in common as the second factor. And that's it.